Welcome, welcome, patrons. So there are a handful of things in the DA fandom that we collectively just don't talk about much. One of these is the Band of Three. And while the band found some interesting things, it's just not really discussed often. So let's take a moment to dive into the journeys of K, F, and V, also known as the Band of Three. Context. So the first mention of the band comes from the Codex entry Enigma of Kirkwall from Dragon Age 2. The Codex itself is pretty unique in the series and is divided into 12 parts, with 4 being found per act. You even get an achievement for collecting all 12 parts, and it's actually easy to miss quite a few of them. Years later, when World of Fatus came out, it had a small section diving into the Band of Three and giving us some more context. And that's about it. Despite the interesting lore questions the band raises, there hasn't been much more added to them. So let's talk about all the info we have in the order it was released. The Codex. I'm not going to be reading the entire codex in this video, but I do have a video reading it already, although be warned it was like the, literally the first codex video I ever did, so it's janky as hell, but it works. But for those that don't want to listen to my old mic again, let's give a quick overview. The first entry just talks about wanting to find mysteries of the Imperium and hints at the magisters who broke into the Golden City. It ends with saying that this group has taken a vow of some sort and that the reader should look for their marking, which is just described as curious. As a side note, each of these entries is labeled with the, band, the marking of the Band of Three, but we never see what that actually looks like. This letter is described as looking tattered and Hawk found it under a cobblestone in the gallows. Second entry describes bribing the Viscount to search the Kirkwall archives, although it was a worthless endeavor. The writer notes that during one of Kirkwall's slave uprisings, the slaves burned much of the scrolls and books that was in the city. The writer says that during the uprising, Deventer sent three magisters and their legions to take the city back. While they didn't make it, likely due to meeting Andraste and her army, they wonder why send so many to take back this small city. What was so important? Third entry talks about how the famous Kirkwall quarries weren't founded until after the Imperium took it over. They aren't actually sure who founded Kirkwall. The Alamari are the Dai Feds. Now, who are the Dai Feds? Welcome to the only source on whoever they are, so I have no idea. But it was for sure a human barbarian group who didn't need the metal in the hills. While some believe that the Imperium took the city because it was a good harbor, the Imperium had strong enough magic that it wasn't that important. So why take it? Fourth entry, the last found in Act 1, is probably the most interesting in the first group. It describes the writer finding rare books in Lowtown Markets, things thought lost. After some digging, the writer finds that below Kirkwall is a maze of passages containing chambers of treasure. Every now and then, someone finds an unlooted one and sells what they find. So the group is going underground. The fifth entry is an update on their adventures under Kirkwall. They have found one unlooted chamber with really nothing of note inside, but it seems that these old passageways were once a collection of mages who lived and researched away from the common folk. Why did the city hide these efforts? The sixth entry is another banger. In short, after talking with the local mason, the writer digs out a map of the city and notices that in the oldest parts of the streets, they make out outlines of magical glyphs. The whole city is designed for some ritual. Number seven is when things start to take a turn for the worst. They have checked the Chantry records, and from old tax documents, they find that legions of slaves have just gone missing over the years. For every thousand that entered Kirkwall, a hundred disappeared. In one year, 203 people just vanished. Where did they go? Entry 8, the last of Act 2. The group was attacked by mages, and one of the members, V, is badly hurt and likely won't make it. They aren't sure who is attacking them and why. They know that double the amount of mages fail their harrowing compared to other circles, and a large number also turn to blood magic. Was who attacked them part of a secret fraternity looking for the same thing they were? In Entry 9, using a fake identity, one of the band gained access to the Templar records and found what happened to the slaves. Buildings built upon lakes of blood, sewers with grooves for blood to flow down to an unknown chamber. What was all this for? For Entry 10, the writer notes that the veil is very thin in Kirkwall, but they have found that the managers in Kirkwall were thinning it even more. In the deepest parts of the city, demons can contact even non-mages. They plan to go to a chamber where the veil is at its thinnest. Entry 11 says that there was a recent finding of a new chamber, a large one in perhaps the Archon's visitation chambers, which remember this for later. There is a huge amount of rare books for sale, including the Fell Grimoire. As a quick aside, this is a book that contains dark secrets of the Imperium and is supposed to be the key to summoning the Forbidden One, something that Hawk does later in a different quest to destroy the book. 
What's interesting is that this entry then questions if the Forgotten Ones were real too. Remember that these are two different groups, and I'll go over that in a bit. The final entry begins with the fact that F is dead, and the final rider is injured. They have gone to the central chamber, but a Forgotten One, or Demon, or whatever it is, is still there, so the rider's going back to kill it, and they fear the one is already unbound. The final line is the writer saying that they forswear their oath and whatever the magister was doing must be destroyed and make her help whoever figures out what they couldn't. And that's it. You don't unlock any quests from it, although there is a side quest where you go hunt down and kill Zevenkek, one of the forbidden ones, and that is surprisingly completely unconnected to gathering these entries. There really isn't any explanation on what this was about, and it's just been this weird little codex entry for years. World of Thetis until about five years later when World of Thetis Volume 2 dropped and had a little more on the Band of Three, and I mean like, a little more. The explanation comes in the form of letters between Lord Seeker Thalric Adan, Edain? I don't know, and Seeker Cahail, dated 937 Dragon, the year Anders exploded the Chantry. The first letter from the Lord Seeker is merely demanding answers from Cahail, who created the Band of Three and even brought one of its members the Templar Custody to investigate. Cahail then explains that the goal of the band was to get rid of blood magic by finding out how it began in the first place. In his mind, there was no way the old gods taught the Tevinter Magisters, it had to have been the ancient elves. However, it's unknown how much of Tevinter's power was actually elven magic, and he sought to find the answer. V was Vanel, a Dalish mage who saw his keeper and clan destroyed by blood mages. K was Brother Carowin, and F was Philestia. Kirkwall had a deep connection with both the Elven Empire and Deventer Imperium, as well as a lot of blood mages, so he sent the band there to start their investigation, having them take holy vows to find all they could and bring it back to the Seekers. Along with trying to find why there were so many blood mages in Kirkwall, the nature of its thin veil, they were also tasked with seeing if the Elven Forgotten Ones were connected to the Demonic Forbidden Ones. And with that, that's all we have on the Band of Three. Purpose so now that we're all caught up, let's talk about why this could be important. There are two major points that I'm going to focus on, the purpose of Kirkwall and the Forbidden and Forgotten Ones. To put it plainly, the Band of Three found that the Imperium didn't take over Kirkwall because of the mines or that it was a good harbor, and they could have set up a slave trading city literally anywhere else. Something brought them to Kirkwall, and we still don't know what it was. Further, Kirkwall was, at one point, literally designed to be a blood magic center. The roads were giant glyphs, and rivers of blood drained to bloody lakes, all to fuel… something. Lots of mages and perhaps even the Archon was in on this. One in ten slaves that passed through the gates became fodder for whatever they were doing, and we have no idea how long this went on. If the one year stated in the Codex was about the average, then about 200 people were killed each year. If this went on until the slave uprising, about 600 years after the founding of Kirkwall, then about 120,000 people were murdered for something. The best fan theory that people have suggested was that this was the place where the Magisters broke into the Golden City. The only real basis for that is what other giant magical event that involved Tevinter has been talked about in the series. Now, because that's a bit vague of a theory, the only critique I can actually make is that, per the Chant of Light, the Archon at the time claimed no knowledge of the Magisters breaking into the Golden City. Yet the Band of Three claims that there was a chamber under Kirkwall fit for the Archon. But all of that could easily be explained as either the Archon lying to save his ass, the Magisters not telling the Archon what all was really going on, or even the Archon actually didn't know when the Band was wrong. The other thing that is brought up is the connection between the Forgotten and the Forbidden Ones. I think I talk about this a bit in my video on the two groups, but it's been so long that I have no idea what I said and I can't be asked to listen to my own voice again to find out. So as a quick review, the Forbidden Ones are a collection of legendary demons. In each game so far, we have beaten at least one of the four. Gax King, the Unbound in Dragon Age Origins, Seven Kex in Dragon Age 2, and Imshale in Dragon Age 3. The last remaining one is the Formless One, which if I were to put my money on it, we will see sometime in Dragon Age 4. If you notice in the Codex entry, it mentions that at least one of other Forbidden One is already unbound, which likely refers to Gax King. The Forgotten Ones, on the other hand, are the collection of evil elven gods from the Dalish legends. We only know of three, Gelderon, Darenthal, and Inaris. Now weirdly enough, despite Inquisition going very heavy on the elven lore, only once is the Forgotten Ones even mentioned, in a special codex found in the Jaws of Hakon DLC. Solus mentions nothing, no fun hints in Trespasser, pretty much just complete silence on who this group was. From the little we do know, Solus is also associated with them. 
Per legends, he could walk with both the Evanurists and the Forgotten Ones. We also know that at least Gelderon didn't like the gods, and it's easy to assume that they were rebels against the evil Evanurists as well. Basilis portrayed them too in Dalish legends, so perhaps they didn't do too well either. Minus the name similarities, there really isn't anything that really connects them, so whatever the Seeker saw in connecting them, we as players have even less. However, in Trespasser, there was a codex entry regarding the Forbidden Ones. In short, the Evanurists banished the group for what seems to be running away from when the people needed the most. There are theories that at one point the Elven Empire fought the Dwarven Titans and won, and part of me wonders if this is about the Forbidden Ones, who at one point were powerful spirits in the Elven Empire, and remember that spirits were close to people in this time, and they fled the battle when things got a little hairy, so the Evanars banished them for cowardice. At least this is how I read it, if you have other interpretations, please comment below. So now we have at least the connection of the Forbidden Ones and the Forgotten Ones. Both were part of the Elven Empire in some form. At this point, we can only speculate, but I find it interesting that when the Band of Three went looking for the source of who taught blood magic to the world, they somehow got to looking at both the Forgotten Ones and the Forbidden Ones. This is starting to form into a huge theory here, but in the sadly now closed DA browser game The Last Court, there was a random event where Mysterious Dalish attacked a group of your subjects. Your subjects report that they saw these Dalish with red markings on their face, unlike normal Valisleen, who sacrificed humans to the Forgotten Ones. What if, once upon a time, when the Evanurus ruled the lands and matched a group of spirits and elves, which, uh, again, at this point in time, the line between elf and spirit might have been very blurry, but they saw the injustice that was being done and began to stand against them. The Evanurus were powerful in fate-based magic, but this group searched for a way to make their own energy source to combat them, and found that life energy was just as powerful, if not more so. So, to free the world of evil or injustice, or I don't know what, this group of seven, which maybe is important, maybe is not, practiced blood magic to fight, no matter how many lives were taken. Perhaps Solus started out as one of these people, and perhaps he had a change of heart. Perhaps the Forbidden Ones hated the Evanuras for banishing them from their home and their motives were purely selfish. Perhaps the Forgotten Ones were doing this for the other elves, who were once slaves like them. Maybe they all started out as one group and then broke up, or maybe they just joined together later on because they had a similar goal. But then, why teach the world blood magic after the Evanuris was gone? There is something to be said about causing chaos, just for the sake of chaos, which seems to be Inchail's main idea, because you just wanted to play in Inquisition. Perhaps there is another reason too, and perhaps introducing blood magic to humans was the way to silence the elven population forever. Two of the four Forbidden Ones appear human rather than elven, so perhaps they harbor a great hate for those that once banished them. Or perhaps, if taught by the Forgotten Ones, they need someone to break them out of wherever they are, and blood magic is the key to that. Either way, the only solid information we have at this point is that there's some room to believe that blood magic connects these two groups, and finding out why they brought it into the world might be a crucial piece of the Thetis puzzle we are all trying to figure out. But whatever it was, the Band of Three seemed to find a small part of it, and whatever that was, they were both willing to die, to find, and destroy it. And that, dear patrons, is all that we know about the Band of Three, the theory that Kirkwall was once the home to the magisters that broke into the Golden City, and maybe one day I will be redeemed for mixing up the names of the Forgotten Ones and the Forbidden Ones by them just merging into one convenient group. Do you still have lingering questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory? Feel free to tweet me at Ekildathon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gilanon on Reddit. Doresh Sharon!